welcome to the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Amos Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. More than meets the eye. Yeah, we got Silver Quill's edgy that way. Oh yeah, I'm totally edged. <laughs> Careful not to cut yourself on my sharpness. Oh <laughs> no. Also joining us today is Jacob. Hey everybody. Alrighty then, um, I'm. S- if you're listening to this two weeks later and you're wondering, wait, I'm still not well? Haha! Tell me why. Yeah, tell me why we were tickle stuff. So, anywho, we will be reviewing the uh, My Little Pony Cross Transformers 2, uh, the Magic of Cybertron issue number 2. Uh, in this issue, the Wonderbolts and Starscream Seekers from an an easy alliance to stop King Sombrero and Applejack has a Wild West style showdown with Wild Wheel. <clears throat> so anywho, uh, first impressions are in order, I guess. Silver, what do you think? Well, two parts to this story and thus one part I find really fun. And uh, a good balance between the uh, ponies and Transformers. The second one is mostly confusing. And probably, the we- I'd say, the weakest entry, unfortunately. Mm. All right, all right. Jacob, what about you? Well, I do have to agree with Silver on that one. However, uh, well, the first story has an unpredictable plot twist going... Well, no, not plot, it's just a twist outside of the story. See, it was written by Ian Flynn, but the art was done by the one who did arguably the worst story in Friendships in Disguise. Remember the Rainbow Dash and Windblade story, which was written by yeah. Sam Max. The one who did the second issue, uh, the second story in this issue, but was drawn by Priscilla Tremontano. Which is already ironic because, uh, well, he's written the second story in this issue. Uh, in that story, the writing is poor as well. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, in the previous, in the Windblade story, uh, the writing was poor and uh, unfortunately so was the art so they magnified how bad the whole thing was but since you, since you have even Flynn working on this one well the effect is quite different honestly and we're gonna see so yeah that's it alright alright all right. as for me I, I I like both comics um Part one was kind of cool, and part two is like, wow, that that is awesome. And I I, I guess if you listen to the Patreon um, special, uh, it's kind of like Michael Bay's popcorn flick. Norman no one mention, didn't like it. Norman don't mention that word. What popcorn flick? No, the other one. <laughs> Michael Bay. Oh, Michael Bay. All right. I, I won't mention Michael Bay anymore. Did you know that he's not involved in the new movie? Mm, still, Transformers in live action hasn't worked so far for me. Uh, yeah, it's called Transformers Beasties. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but with but with this comic, yes. now they're trying to be besties. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, if you guys have not watched, this, sorry, if you guys have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Um, so we start off the comic with well, um, the Wonderbolts and Starscream flying, and uh, long story short. They decide to work together to stop the infected ponies and Autobots from, well, running a ruckus and whatnot. Like, they, they are trying to 
minimize the damage and whatnot. So, uh, the Wonderbolts and Starscream's secret team are working together, and we see that Rainbow Dash is just agitating Starscream, saying that um, he would look good in a, you lost yeah just just reminding us about what happened previously and yeah Starscream is just not happy with this um, Spitfire comes in and says or just asks you think it's a good idea to mess around with the big guy with the missile and laser stuff and Rainbow Dash being Rainbow just says I, I could out speed him um, in my sleep and whatnot. And Spitfire just reminds Rainbow Dash about what's at stake and whatnot. So before they could uh, kiss, we see that the ponies and robots are just shooting at them in the sky. So this happens, Starscream just says, um, Squadron bombard, uh, bombard those weak-minded fools. And then, uh, one of them just says, there's Decepticon among them. And, yeah, Starscream just says, blast them. And Sorin just flies in and says, wait, 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 wait. Uh, we're supposed to disable any pony we find so we can break uh, Sombra's enchantment. Uh, the flying, and, and yeah, um, Silver, who who are they? I, I'm I'm at a loss. Ah, uh, so, well, you're not alone. In fact, we're gonna we'll have a little bit of art discussion uh, shortly. <laughs> All right, you've got these are collectively called the Seekers. Yeah. So they're Star Scream, obviously. The blue one, Thundercracker, and the black one is Skywarp. And people get them mixed up all the time, and with good reason. They're the same figure painted three different ways, so you have to buy the same toy three times over. Unless you just buy Starscream three times and recolor him. <laughs> Which you could do if they're hard to find, but otherwise, you know, you're still buying three of the same toy. Oh, man. That's just silly. Anywho, carrying on. Um, Skywarp here just says, yeah, um, Sorin's right. Uh, we, we, we can't make an army if our soldiers are dead. So Starscream here just like, ah, god dang it. Um, stole the insubordination and cover me. So he's trying to do something. And the ponies and robots here are just trying not to get hit. <coughs> So, Rainbow Dash here comes up with a plan, <coughs> and <coughs> and the plan is kind of fascinating. So, before I continue on, Silver, what do you think? Story so far. Well, this is a study in contrasts. Uh, you have the Wonderbolts who have a leader who's looking out for their safety. She's mostly concerned saying we're just stunt flyers, despite the fact that they've been used in a certain military aspect Hold in on. Equestria. I just remembered something. Wasn't this also the case for the wings over Yak Yakistan? That they're stunt flyers? Yeah. Uh, because I, so. I remember Norman raging about that one. Wow, I, I don't remember anything. <laughs> But then you have the Seekers, which are, which is sort of the opposite. Their leader is a complete egomaniac who only thinks about himself and views the squadron as, well, they should just be his unquestioning supporters. And so it's a, stu it's a study in leadership almost. Also, I will say one of the funniest lines, Skywarp, the black Jet mm -hmm. does not say Soren's name. He calls him the flying glue bottle. <laughs> the flying glue bottle. <laughs> glue bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this dumb. I was being nice. <laughs> well, 
Skywarp wasn't. <laughs> All right. That's all, Silva? That's it for now. All right. Jacob, what about you? Story so far. Well, the story so far is good. Now, notice how vastly different the art for Pornis looks in this tissue in comparison to the Wingblade tissue. It's like a huge improvement. Either the art, I think the artist had a bit more practice to draw Pornis uh, in the in the ta- in the space time that she in the wait. Who's the artist again? Uh, Priscilla Tramontano. Yeah. Apparently she had more uh, time to draw ponies better because it looks way better in comparison than in the previous series. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if you give a person a lot of time to work on stuff, you get better quality. Yay. And, and because uh, influence writing this one, it also well both boost each other up on how much better this uh, story is altogether. Mm. True, true. Anyway, I'm gonna continue on. So, like I mentioned before, Rainbow Dash has a plan, and her plan is to get in closer to the mayhem. So, what she's going to do is. Uh, the Wonder Balls are going to be distraction while the Seekers are going to get their disabling gizmo ready. And yeah, um, th- it seems like a plan. Uh, Spitfire is not happy with this, but nobody's coming up with a better plan. So uh, the Wonder Balls ready up and they ask the captain if uh, we're going to follow Rainbow Dash and yep we're going to do that so they initiate the Atlas Altius Volantis soaring higher in Latin which is ironic considering that they're actually making a free fall at this point yeah they're not soaring higher (laughs) I know so anywho, uh, they come in, they uh, be distractions for the shot, and Rainbow Dash swoops in and does her Sonic Rain Boom. And I have to say that this version or this art for the Sonic Rain Boom is kind of lame. At least there was a Sonic Rain Boom this time. Yeah, but it's not, it's not the best, man. But anywho... Um, she performs the Sonic Rain Boom, and most of the ponies and all the, uh, and robots are distracted. So the Seekers fly in and drop down their rocket nets, uh, capturing the ponies and Autobots in some kind of huge giant net. And um, the day is going to go save. Sorry, sis. That was terrifying, and yeah, they they praise each other and whatnot. So I'm I'm gonna say that there's a part of there's a part here is going to be confusing. I'll point it out when I see it. Uh, Star Scream here kicks an Autobot, and the Seeker just says uh, we could just kill them. Nobody's gonna know. And Star Scream here just questions. Uh, honestly, what was Sombra thinking sending such poor show for force against me? And um, Starscream here sees himself as a great leader and whatnot and says that uh, he soon shall be taking over uh, Sombra's place and all voices will raise as one to praise Rainbow Dash. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> and with that comic ends. I, I'm confused. What the hell happened? What do you mean what happened? Yeah, I mean, we see that Starscream's kicking robots, saying that how awesome he is, and suddenly, everybody's cheering for Rainbow Dash. Wait, what? 
because she's got the genuine uh, efforts. <coughs> I mean, they, yeah, she she was the one who led the real counterfeiter. She led by action while Star screams all bluster. <laughs> I mean, her his plan was of sound, kill everybody. Yeah, but how uh, pragmatic is that anyway? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I just find it fun, uh, funny in that panel how Thundercracker and Skywarp look like a pair of giggly mini schoolgirls. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. So, um, did I ask for your guys' opinion <laughs> when we finished the first set of comics? I forgot. Well, this is... Uh, well... You go first. Well, I mean... Uh, I, I... You asked us for our thoughts as we were just starting up, uh, but I think I just gave them... Right? This shows studies in leadership. Spitfire worried for the crew's safety. Rainbow Dash pushing uh, the bounds of safety, but to accomplish the goal. And Starscream being completely egocentric. And again, I'll ca- I'll ask you to look through all the Transformers we see in the uh, brainwash crowd. None of them are, they're all either season one or season two introductions. No season three. <coughs> true, true. I, I see the milit- uh, military jeep. I see jazz. I see, uh, who's that? Who's that van? Uh, van? Uh, let's see, there's Motormaster, there's Ironhide. Ironhide, yeah, Ironhide. Uh, the Jeep is called, uh, Hound. That's season two, right? Season oh, one. Really? And then, uh, Swindle and Brawl. I feel like Sombra was trying to get uh, the combiners, but much like a kid shopping in the <laughs> 80s, it was hard to find the complete set. Wait, 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 wait. wait. When, when they sold the combiners, they didn't sell them as a set. No, as I recall, well, in some cases there was a set box, but more often than not, they were sold loose. Oh. What e- each one individually? Oh, that's annoying. Oh, that's that's very annoying. It's a good thing now that they don't do that. I think. Oh, they, I think they still do that. Oh God. Yeah, you've got to you've got to figure thing. You got to figure out how you're going to get these things in advance. Pre order. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> anyway, Jacob, what about you, man? What do you think so far? Well, well, so far the story is good. Nothing to complain about, it, honestly. And well, as I said earlier, earlier, uh, kudos to the artist for uh, well. Improving actually on the previous work she did. Hmm. That's good to know. Anyway, let's move on to the second part. And the second part is One Trick Pony. We see Applejack looking really awesome here, walking in the terrain of Cybertron, all dusty, where they see. <coughs> Um, tumbleweeds coming in it was wires oh no and immediately a question pops into my mind does Cybertron actually have any natural geological uh, structure considering it's a giant plan- machine planet I think so because if I'm not mistaken there's a western type of terrain they do have the Rustland Wastes, oh, okay. which is where Applejack is. The the uh, power plug tumbleweeds are an interesting touch. Yeah, and that is why you have to use wireless headphones, because wires kill. But anywho, I'm going to continue on for a bit. So... Applejack walks in the wasteland. There's rust storms. 
and a, a lot of bad stuff going on. And when she walks further in, she stumbles upon a poncho wearing robot. And he introduces himself as Wild Wheel and says that this is his territory to protect. And they, they have a, this really cool banter where uh, Applejack says, I need to go home. And Wild Wheel here just says, you're in my territory, so I'm not letting you through. And they have a showdown. They have a showdown. I'm gonna pause here for a bit. Jacob, what do you think, man? Story so far. Well, uh, I do have something to say, but honestly, I'm gonna save it for when you get to the end because there's an there's an issue that I have with uh, this story and actually a few of the ones that were done in the past by this writer. All right, Silva. Well, it certainly has that whole Wild West setup. Oh no. Artists had a little trouble with Wild Wheels Poncho yeah. just because I could see a lot of irregularities in the in the lines. I think they're metal plates, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it was never entirely clear. Well, I mean, do, do they do what? uh Transformers have a way to produce cloth on Cybertron? What what would they use it for anyway? Well, I, I'm, maybe there's some electro sheep. I don't know. It's, it's sheer <laughs> speculation. <laughs> Damn it. Uh. But uh, one of the interesting choices he's fr- he's a relatively new addition to the franchise uh, from Transformers Cyberverse. Cyberverse. That's the 3D one, right? Uh, yes, one of. Huh. Let's see here. Well, what does he even transform into? He didn't do a lot of actual transforming during uh, the series. Um, his, he was a late addition. His toy shows him transforming into a car. Yeah, it's a bit unceremonious. But it also, his toy doesn't feature the poncho. Why does it not have the poncho? It's like Applejack toys not coming with her hat. <laughs> yeah. Dang it. Um, I, I, I just posted a link to his um, art from Cyberverse and whatnot. And he looks cool. Like, he, the, the design for Biowheel is cool. Yeah, that's true. And um, if you take a look, see at the art, like, his punchos looking looks much better than the comic here so it feels like the comic here is not really doing his poncho justice yeah it, I, I knew there's still plates yeah but still um the proper one look the plates looks much better yeah so i mean trying to draw all those patterns on moving plates i can appreciate that it's not an easy task and there's a reason they did it in 3D where you don't have to animate it frame by frame I through that. No. <coughs> oh, this is... but anyway there's not a whole lot else to say at the moment alrighty then I'll continue on so they they have a showdown and the both of them uh pull out their lassos and whip each other. And <laughs> whip it good. But, dee, why dee, is that Bojack calling a rope in her hooves like a G5 pony? She's a proper act when she always hates her rope in her mouth. Ain't cool, man. Why ain't cool? Like holding a rope in your mouth. Ain't cool. Why are you one of those clean freaks? <laughs> oh man, with with where she is now, I have to say, yeah, because she's got, she might have, a uh, locked jaw if she touches anything. 
Logjaw. Tinnitus. What was it, Silver? Uh, well, tinnitus is is uh, I think that's the ear thing. A ringing yeah, in your yeah. ear. What was the one where? Um, met- oh, tetanus. tetanus yeah. You need a tetanus shot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they ain't cool, but still, um, we see them cracking whips and whatnot, and they kind of show their for- ferocity and whatnot, like showing that they're really, really awesome, and they kind of like we see that um, while we're here, uh, cracks a less so, and Applejack hears. Close her eyes. She goes, oh no, I'm going to get whipped. But no, it seems that there was a robot that was trying to attack Applejack from behind. And it seems that the both of them are working together somehow. And coming ends. Yeah, uh, I'm jumping places, but that's how it looks. Well, I think that's because the action in this is actually very hard to follow. Indeed. But anywho, um, Silver, what do you think, man? Well, the reason I call this the weakest of the stories is because while it's definitely playing up the Western motifs, <laughs> it's really hard to track what's going on. I mean, they're they're saying fancy shooting, but they're using whips. Which, uh, if there's time later, uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, I learned a thing about Power Rangers last oh. night that got them in hot water. They use, they, in, during a Western themed show, they use their sidearms as sidearms, and that got parents upset. It's like, really? You're upset at that now? Really? Japan oh, or you, uh, Japanese or American? You know American. it's American. It's always Americans complaining about too much violence. But there, there is a funny theme of Westerns in here. First off, Apple, on the first whip duel, Applejack takes out Quick Strike, who, one, is much bigger than his original uh, Beast Wars self. Oh. But, uh, but he was always Western themed, talking with a rowdy Western accent. And then uh, Wild Wheel takes out Skids, who you would think isn't uh, part of, isn't Western themed. But actually, in the uh, Transformers comics, he his big starring role was in a, a Western themed issue. Let's see here. One sec as I pull up the comic in question. Hmm. Silver, you, you mentioned... Um, Applejack taking out something. Who? Who did? Quick Strike. Who? Who is that? What is that? This... He Quick Strike is from Beast Wars, the second season. He is what they call a Fusor. He's two animals. His beast mode essentially had an error, and it scanned two beast modes into one. So he's a scorpion, but with a cobra uh, for it for a stinger. Oh. She she and well, she took out that I I I did not notice that at all. That's why I uh, that's why I say the action in this is hard to follow. You're not sure who's striking what. There's a thud, and then all of a sudden, quick strike is in there for one panel, and there's like these weird cyber birdies floating around his head. I had to process this for a little while and take his placement right next to. Uh, Wild Wheel to realize it was probably Applejack who took him out as he was sneaking up on Wild Wheel. Oh, wow. I, I did not process that at all because um, looking at the showdown, what I saw was uh, two whips clashing and the scorpion thingy was kind of just there watching the whole thing. Like, I was... Damn, like... Okay... Yeah, see, it's hard to it's hard to follow, and that that but that's the reason uh, Applejack and Wild Wheel become friends. Each one owes the other for a save. Huh. 
and yeah, man, like, yeah, um, what you say is true. So, so in the end, what I'm processing in my brain here is that uh, this issue, One Trick Pony, or this comic, One Trick Pony, is just um, flash and no substance, just like Michael Bay. Well, I would say it's it's mostly all it, it's a western showdown. But then you got you realize, hey, this isn't. Uh, I can't follow what's happening. the The flow of events is hard to track. That is also true. But I do like the design for Applejack here. I I, I do like. Uh, who who drew this? Uh, give a second. Uh, Trish Ford's Trish Foster. No, um, is F O R S T N E R. Yeah, Trish Forster. Is this the same Trish that does the uh, Stray Dog comic? Uh, let's see here. I know we're mostly through the ponies, and she may have been working with Tony Fleece on that. Yeah. Trish Forstner. Straight out. Yeah, she collaborated on Straight Out. Oh, Dogs. it's her. Huh. Oh, my. That, that, oh, that is very unfortunate. Why? Um, her, her art. Um, sorry, for, her, uh, her art is awesome. Uh, she does really great pony art. And whatnot. It's just that this one here does not show her in a positive light. Uh, I think she depicts the the characters very oh. well. I mean, all those details. Sure, I complain about the the wild wheel poncho, but she drew skids and quick strikes an odd one to draw. So I can appreciate that. It's more that she has. A, I think the struggle is a. F- Understandable flow of events. Yeah, and, 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 and I, what I mean, unfortunate, is that because the art itself is just awesome. When you take a look, see at uh, all the scenes, especially the um, eyes, uh, uh, the sh- eye showdown between uh, Wild Wheel and Applejack, you, you get to see that okay, they're, they're really squaring each other down, and you get to see uh, them twitching for their um, whips and whatnot. Like that is all awesome, but. Like you mentioned before, um, it's just hard to um, process everything. Like, just looking from point A to point B, and that's why I just say that it's all popcorn, like a Michael Bay movie. Because when you take a look, see at that, it's just wow, flashy, and in the end, not a lot of substance, and it feels that way for this one too. Well, we're going to get into a flash and not a lot of substance uh, later. Oh, boy. <coughs> anyway, uh, Jacob, what do you think, man? Well, okay. Here's the problem that I mentioned pr- in the previous podcast. And, <coughs> well, in a crossover series where there's a limited number of things that you can put in since it's not going to last for long... Or to put it in other words, uh, everything you put into a story needs to be related Mm -hmm. to the overarching plot. Which is why things sort of feel wasted here. Like, when you decide to put a slice of life that causes a complete disconnect from what's happening. And that's especially if the plot has urgency, urgency in it. And... That's, well, should be told, that's also kind of an issue that the G5 comics have as well. Now, in the Friendship in Disguise, those issues were perpetrated by Sam Mag's stories, uh, the one with Peaky Pie, Gage, and Shockwave, and later Rainbow Dash and Windblade, the latter being the biggest offender. And now we have, in this series... We have it happen again, first with Scoot Luzant and RC and Greenlight, and then this story with Applejack and Wild Will. I mean, this story seems completely severed from what's happened and what's happening in the first issue. I mean, that has always been the MO for um, this kind of crossover, because 
one of the few things that didn't make sense for uh, the first issue for this series was Ed Lofty and uh, Ed Holiday. No, no, th- th- those two make sense. It's just that the appearance of RC and Greenlight being there, like, wait, what? Weren't you with uh, Prime when things happen? Wait, when now you're here? Wait, what? what? What's going on here? Yeah, but also the fact that Scootaloo apparently didn't didn't need any rescuing to begin with anyway. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's comedic effect. And Applejack with this one, like suddenly she's uh thrown out of wait what? What what wasn't she with uh her friends? I mean Yeah Yeah, exactly. I mean what happens in this story? Apple Jackson how ends up in the Badlands, even though she was previously with uh, half of her of her group, and yet she's now wandering alone. Sh- and she meets this Transformer. They ex- exchange a few words, and then they go on their way. And while Will's never going to appear after this uh, issue again. Oh wow, that sucks. He he was awesome. Yeah. Like knowing that that sucks. But at the same yeah. time too, like. Um, you, you could explain you can explain in a way that okay um, Applejack has sent on her way for a mission so she has to go there alone to recruit robots and stuff and to me like oh uh, she's recruiting Wild Wheel and knowing that he won't be there anymore kind of sucks yeah and she also said that she's trying to get home I so mean that's also a disconnect I mean, that's also true to make it to make things simple, but yeah, I I see what you mean. And again, as we established in the friendships in disguise, what does uh, Pinkie Pie and Gage's story will contribute to to the overarching plot? Where all of a sudden they're just there having a cooking show, and there's. Fun and funny things going on. It uh, contributes nothing. I the mean, same goes for the for the wind blade thing, with the, which makes absolutely no sense when they suddenly have a race and the whole group so uh, over there watching Rainbow Dash race. Yeah, that, that one I agree, but with Pinkie Pie, you don't just you you, you don't question Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie yeah, does what okay. Pinkie Pie wants to do. Okay, I'll I'll give it a pass on that one, but. Honestly, well, as a result, this crossover series has more inconsistency, and I hate to say this, it has more inconsistency than Guardians of Harmony. I... Uh, I guess. It, it's... Yeah, the only way I, I can reconcile these is the thought that the portal stays open, and we're experiencing stories after the main crisis. I... But that would, but that's hard to sell in this case because then you'd have to figure that uh, Skids and Quick Strike were still brainwashed even after the main villain's defeat. Yeah, I, I kind of like the idea of the ponies going about uh, Cybertron to recruit more help so they can defeat Sombra. That that will make sense, but. With the word wording that they say, like, oh, Applejack's going to go home. And like, wait, what? You, you weren't going home before? Weren't you supposed to help your friends? I mean, eh. Yeah, it's just not here. Yeah, so And anyway. this is the last time that uh, Sam Max is going to work on this series. Uh, that, that's unfortunate. He, he has potential, but eh, well. Yeah, he he can do a good slice of life stuff, but unfortunately, when you you have to connect something to the main plot that's happening right now, and it just feels like, well, like you said earlier, Michael Bay. Yep, yep, yep. Michael Bay. But anywho, um, with yes. with with the comics and, uh, let's wrap things up. Silver, final thoughts. Well, first, his story is a lot of fun and a study in contrast of teams. Second one is trying to find similarities under a Western motif, but the, but the action's hard to follow. So I'd say that I think this issue is more of a 50% success. I can dig it. I can dig it. And yeah, um, I, I do like uh, your analysis for the comparison with uh, leaders, with how... Spitfire slash Rainbow Dash uh, treats their crew and uh, their partners 
versus how Starscream does things. But Starscream at the same time too feels... Oh man, I I hate when I have multiple ideas of how Starscream should act and um, behave. And it's... it's, How do I put this? It's fighting in my mind space because uh, Starscream in Armada is awesome. Starscream in G1 is just no... Well, it's all a little different, man. Yeah. Yeah. Same character. What about the, different interpretations? What about Star screaming the cover gallery drawn by Adam Br- Bryce Thomas? <laughs> that was like just playing awesome. with ponies. That was just <laughs> awesome. I, and I just love Megatron in the back. <laughs> the fuck are you playing in it? <laughs> yeah, you, you you see that he's raising an eyebrow. Like, oh god. <laughs> Why am I hearing so the doors are? Ca- why am I hearing the feeling of the son of you winning yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Lord Dark Helmets. What did you see? I didn't see you. Knock before you enter my home. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no, that scene. I definitely didn't see you playing with your dolls. <laughs> did we review that silver? What space yeah. balls? I can't quite remember. I think we did. I, I don't think we did. I think we did um, Mel Brooks' movie, um, The Princess Bride. Ah, okay. I think we did that. Wow, but sh- Spaceball was always on the cuffs. Can I be honest with you guys? Well, either, we- yeah. either which way? I've never watched Spaceballs. It's, um, it, it's, it's one of those things where we won't shame you on it because it's a Mel Brooks movie. It's a parody movie, so yeah. I, I what I know is from the memes that are on the internet. <laughs> no, I'll I'll shame him. How dare you? Not? Your assignment for next time is to have watched Spaceballs and be able to quote it ad nauseum. <laughs> oh man, quote it ad nauseum. Wow, that that's a bit too much. But you know what? Maybe, maybe. You know what? I'm I'm just gonna put it out there. Maybe next time when we do this we'll we'll review space balls. Probably, I don't know. I don't know if you can review it, you can only experience space balls. <laughs> I guess. Like how we experience but, Kung Pao. <laughs> uh, anywho. Yes, um, Silver, anything more to add? No, I feel like we've covered everything to discuss. All right, yeah, then, Jake, what about you, man? Well, uh, I don't think there's much to say about it. The first issue is good, and well, technically not. If the, even if the second story is not uh, like I don't know bad per se, it's still got well the flow of the story problems, and well, what I mentioned earlier, it's really got no weight and the. Uh, big story that's happening with this uh, crossover. Alright, alright. Yeah. But we got the preview for the next issue and I'm actually <laughs> looking for for this one. Alright, can't wait. As for me, I I like both ish I, I like both stories, but I, I do agree and I do admit that uh One Trick Pony has its problems and those problems are glaring. Um I, I'm noticing a pattern with uh the crossover stories. We we have this um, overarching storyline with um, the first sto- uh, the first part where you you see them trying to continue on the story with um, doing stuff that push the story along. And in the second part of the comic, uh, you, you see quote unquote size of life. Things that nothing to do, the things that has nothing to do with the overarching story and so on, but it's just cool or fun. Um, like at Lofty and at Holiday, uh, the cool and fun part was uh, them beating down Killmonger. Killmaster, also known as Murder King. <laughs> yep. Uh, and with uh, sorry. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, uh, and with Sorry. the second part of uh, issue two, One Trick Pony, the visuals are awesome. You, you get to see Applejack in a cute poncho 
with uh, her uh, hooves in wrapping and she's technically wearing a spurs. That's cool. So, uh, th- th- those are awesome visual uh, cues or, or just awesome vis- visuals. But it doesn't really portray any proper story or uh, coherent stories that you can follow because uh, I had Silver explain to me what happened where there's a beasties there that's trying to attack um, Wild Wheel from behind. And I I didn't notice Applejack's whipping it. Same here. Something's going wrong. You must whip it. <laughs> yeah, but still... Um, overall, I, I have to say that it's fun, but it has its problems. And yeah, um, I think that's about it. So anyway, um, let, let, let's wrap things up. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on YouTube, DeviantArt, and Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on Patreon and Ko-fi uh, under the same MLP Silver Quill, where you can support my After the Fact videos. Uh, on Wednesdays, if there's a new comic out, I write up a review on the Quest Today Daily. And if there's a new Tell Your Tale, there's a Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight going up on uh, my DeviantArt. And on the weekdays, I try to start everyone off with a fresh groan with the weekday pun. <laughs> Yay, those are fun. Uh, Silver, about Tell Your Tale, is it consistent to uh, my weekly show now? That's what they claim, but we we haven't even... Like, here, at the time we're, we're recording this, I had done had two false starts... So I took a week off. And of course, that's the week Tell Your Tale came back. <laughs> oh, man, that sucks. And is, have you seen it on Netflix? Or how is it? N- n- not yet. I've only seen it on YouTube. Yeah, okay. Because I, 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 I had a whole tirade on uh, the regular NBS show episodes about how confusing just watching tell your tale on YouTube is because their playlist system is not helpful at all. Oh, no. Well, yeah, YouTube YouTube, where they lump it together into 30-minute segments is just a mess. Yeah. Anyway. There we go. Uh, Jacob, where can we find you? You can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yaka.Torka under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomorrow Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading the original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in my dual fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check it out, guys. And also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also... Uh, and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page and you can also catch us on com. links are in the show notes uh, if you'd like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com with every support you get a week's of the access to review the discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about thank yous I would like to thank you Jacob Lucky Knight Rest of Lag and also Tristan thank you so much guys you are great so anyway I have been Norman Sanzo I am Cecil Raquel I'm Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Applejack, whip it good. Crack that whip. Oh man. Love that song. Devo, right? Yes, with the hats. Uh, fun, 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 fun.